A typical type of kinematics problem is the so-called catch-up problem. It can have different uh, variations of it, but in the end it's always two objects moving uh, on different paths and the question is where and when do they meet. So let's look at an example uh, where a car A leaves Montreal heading towards Toronto uh, with a speed of 50 kilometers an hour and car B leaves Montreal one hour after car A uh, driving at a speed of 100 kilometers an hour towards Toronto as well and the question is where and when will car B catch up with car A? Now there are two ways of solving it. One is doing an ST graph and one is with the equations. We're going to solve both of them and both have the same steps that we're always going to be looking at. The first thing that you should look at is when is time zero? Which one do we consider time as zero? You can actually choose yourself. Do we consider time as zero when A leaves Montreal or do we consider time as zero when B leaves Montreal? Uh, the advantage of using B is that then you can do it with graphs and equations. If you were to choose A, the equations for constant acceleration will not work because B will not have a constant acceleration for the entire time. B will have zero uh, velocity, then a huge peak of acceleration, then suddenly 100 kilometers an hour. So you would have to split up the movement somehow by using a graph. So if you want to be using equations, there's an advantage to make sure that both objects are having a constant acceleration and this is where you consider time as t equals zero. Now, once we established when time is zero, so for us time is zero when car B leaves Montreal. So let's add this here. At time equals zero, uh, B leaves Montreal. Uh, then we have to look, okay, when B leaves Montreal, at this moment, where is A? So B was leaving Montreal one hour after A. So that means A was already driving 50 kilometers an hour for one hour. That means in our position time graph, after uh, when B is starting at zero, our car A already traveled 50 kilometers. 50 kilometers an hour times one hour. That means our car A was already here. Now, let's draw the entire graph of A, uh, what it's doing. In each hour, A will be driving 50 kilometers further. So at one hour, A is at 100 uh, kilometers. At two hours, A will be at 150. Three hours will be at 200 kilometers. So this is a rough sketch of what A is doing. Now let's have a look what B is doing. B is driving at 100 kilometers an hour and you say it's starting at t equals zero in Montreal at kilometer zero. After one hour, where is B? B was driving for one hour with 100 kilometers an hour. So in this case, we'll be at 100 kilometers. At two hours, he will be at 200 kilometers. At three hours, at 300 kilometers and so on. So here, is what the movement will look like, more or less. When and where do they meet? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. That's when the two lines cross. So here is where they meet. 100 kilometers outside of Montreal. And one hour after B left Montreal. So two hours after A left Montreal. So we found the solution from the graph. Now how could you have done the same thing with the equations? With the equations, 
uh, we simply have to write down both equations of car A and car B. So car A, the blue one, is the position as a function of time, is its initial position, so in this case 50 kilometers, plus its initial velocity, so 50 kilometers per hour times time, and we considered we are ignoring accelerations, traffic jams, and all the other things. Car B, S as a function of time, is where well, was initially zero kilometers plus V initial times time, so 100 kilometers per hour times time. Also, we're ignoring acceleration, traffic jams, etc., etc. And now, what we have to do to find when and where they meet, we simply do S A equals S B as a function of time, and we're going to be solving. They have to be at the same position, and we find at what time are they at the same position. So I can write my SA 50 kilometers plus 50 kilometers per hour times time equals 100 kilometers per hour times time. And I'm solving for time, so I have 50 kilometers is 100 minus 50, 50 kilometers per hour times time, so I get that time is one hour. And then I plug it in either in A or B, in this case I would definitely use B, and one hour times 100 kilometer gives me position is 100 kilometers. And I get exactly the same answer. Now, this was a pretty straightforward, simple example where we had no accelerations or we were ignoring them because over a long period of time we can totally do that. What, however, if you have something where a car is accelerating? Well, the curve then would simply look a bit different. For example, if I had a car C, that accelerates, I could have a curve like this, and this would be the point where I'm meeting uh, or catching up with car A. And in the equation then, you would have a term with the t-square, and your equation here to solve will become a quadratic equation to solve, where you probably will have two times. Your calculator will always give you two possibilities, because the calculator will not know or not distinguish between positive and negative time, so your calculator most likely will give you a negative time and a positive time. Of course, it's the positive time that's the one where really the meeting happens.